In Genesis chapter number 15, I'm interested in verse number 1. The Bible says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, I didn't hear one testimony. Every, everybody that spoke up was giving honor to thee for how good you've been in their life and what you've done for them. And God, we're thankful for those. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And some did tonight. And Lord, that's been a blessing. Lord, we are thankful to once again be able to come and assemble in your house. We're thankful to be able to look into the perfect law of liberty one more time that we might grow and glean thereby that we might uh, uh, truly look into the word of God, the lamp unto our feet and light unto our path that we might know uh, the ways of thy holiness and the ways of thy instruction. Lord, that we might be found in the center of the will of God. God, I pray you'd help us tonight to set in heavenly places. I pray that, Lord, uh, you would speak to our hearts, you would break the stony uh, uh, parts of our hearts, the mold of complacency we've allowed to build up in our lives, and God, you would uh, uh, truly, uh, 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 as the potter works with the clay, you would do a work on us tonight from the inside out that when we leave here, we'd be transformed into thy likeness, that folks would take note that we've been with God uh, and God, I pray that we'd see a great harvest of souls come to Christ. And I pray that we'd see uh, uh, many turn to thee in this time of turmoil in our land. Uh, I do pray tonight for our president. I pray for our leaders that, God, you'd give them wisdom. I pray that you would certainly uh, uh, cause them in their search and quest for uh, 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 help with this virus, uh, that they'd look beyond science uh, they would look beyond reason, uh, and they'd look into the heavens, uh, and they'd see the one who's got all the answers. Uh, and they'd learn to put their faith and trust in Almighty God. Uh, God, I pray for any of them that aren't saved, they'd get saved. Uh, and I pray that great revival would break out in our land, uh, that we would once again be called a Christian nation. Uh, God, I pray we'd see a great work. Uh, even done here tonight. Uh, bless those that are working with the children on the other side. Uh, God, I pray for those uh, that haven't reached the age of accountability. We'd see them, uh, 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 Lord, the Word of God be hid down deep in their heart. Uh, Lord, that it would come to fruition. We'd see them saved at a young age. Uh, those that are uh, 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 have reached that age back there, Lord, uh, as they're learning about Jesus, as the Word of God is being taught, uh, God, I pray we'd see them saved. Maybe even tonight, uh, see some of them young and saved. Uh, I pray for those working with the teens. You'd bless their efforts. Uh, the teens have a lot of peer pressure, a lot of th problems they're facing. Uh, and I pray you'd use our folks uh, uh, to share the Word of God with them, uh, grow their faith. Uh, if any of them haven't been saved, we'll see them saved. Uh, then we in the sanctuary, uh, God, I pray you'd sit down amongst us. Uh, Lord, you know our down-sitting, our uprising. Uh, you know our yesterdays. You know our todays. You even know our tomorrows. Uh, you know what we stand in need of. Uh, and I pray you'd help us even this uh, very hour tonight. Uh, Father, get glory to your glorious name. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, Father, we do pray if there's anybody unsaved in the sanctuary tonight, tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, we pray you'd be glorified, magnified, uh, your people edified, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We find in this uh, uh, one verse, uh, God is dealing with Abram. And we find that this is a hallmark chapter, not only in the life of Abram, but in the life of what would one day become a nation called Israel. And because of Israel uh, uh, being a nation and uh, Israel receiving the promises that Abraham's about ready to receive, uh, all nations of the earth uh, will be blessed because of Israel. Abraham is known as the father of the faith. Uh, and can I say, if it wasn't uh, because of him and believing the promises of God and God doing what he did for him, you and I might not have any hope tonight. Uh, so it's very important. I want you to notice, if you will, way of introduction, I want you to notice, first of all, the after. 
Look what it says in verse number one. After these things. After these things. Well, I don't have time to go into them, but in chapter 14, some very, very significant things happened in the life of Abram, and because so, the Bible says, after these things, business about ready to pick up for him. Can I say if we had time, we'd look in chapter 14 and verses 14 through 16, and you'll find Abram in a conflict. Can I say, uh, he got word that his nephew was taken captive uh, uh, and Abram uh, uh, rounded up his herdsmen, went, uh, they went to battle with that other nation uh, and they delivered his nephew Lot uh, and got all the spoils of the war. Uh, can I say, my dear friends, uh, uh, before you receive a promise from God, uh, before you ever get a blessing from God, uh, before you ever get hope and help from God, you may have to face some battles. Abram did there was some conflict he fought a battle can I say this uh, after not only the conflict but after the confrontation in chapter 14 verses 18 and 19 a very important uh, event there's a confrontation he has an encounter it's so emphatic that you find it later in the book of Hebrews mentioned again uh, uh, he meets a man by the name of Melchizedek who is the king of Salem Salem would go on to become Jerusalem. And this fellow Melchizedek is so impressive. He's uh, 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 without a uh, uh, beginning or ending of days. And can I say, he is not only the king, he's also the priest. And he is so impressive uh, that Abram uh, stops in his tracks and worships him. You say, uh, what does that all mean? Well, Melchizedek is Jesus Christ manifested in the Old Testament. Mm. He met the Lord and didn't know he was the Lord. Huh? I'm glad, hallelujah, when I was going through life, uh, the Lord appeared unto me. Aren't you glad? Uh, now I got to meet the Lord. We see that he confronts uh, Melchizedek. Very important. And can I say, before you ever receive the blessings of God, before you ever have the touch of God in your life, you're going to have to encounter God. Hmm? You're going to have to trust in him. You're going to have to turn to him. But then we find also there's another part of the after. We find that he makes a choice. Uh, look with me in chapter 14, verse number 20. This is after he meets Melchizedek. He says this, And he and blessed to be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. That's what Melchizedek says to Abram. Now look what Abram does. And he gave him tithes of all. Now, can I say this happened years before Moses came on the scene? And can I say this happened years before God commanded Moses about tithing? But Abram was so impressed with Melchizedek, he gave him a tithe of all the spoils of the war. Hmm? One man said this. After Abram tithed, he got some ham to go along with it. it became Abraham. Get it? Y'all start tithing a little more, you might get a little more ham on your life. Are you listening? Huh? I just thought I'd throw that in there, huh? But he made a choice. And that choice was to give because of how impressive. You know what I have found over the years? When people truly, truly come face to face with the Lord, when they truly meet the Lord, they have no problem opening up their wallet. They have no problem uh, getting their feet to serve. They have no problem getting down on their knees. They have no problem worshiping. Uh, uh, they, they have no problem once they truly meet the Lord. You show me folks that are stingy. I gotta, I'll show you folks that's never really met the Lord. Because hmm? uh, can I say God gave his only begotten son. And when you get born again, you take on the nature of God. And can I say it's a, it's a natural thing to just be a giver. Hmm? Anyway, that didn't cost anything. Okay. But we see the after. I want you to know something else about verse number 1 of chapter 15. I want you to notice the appearance. Look what happens. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. The Lord appears to Abram. Now let me just help this. I, I got to do this because if I don't do this, people, they just don't study Donald. And I just, you know, and then I'll get questions later. So let me just handle this. God doesn't speak in visions anymore. Uh, 
You say, Brother Doug, I had a dream that God told me to do something. Well, you better quit drinking Pepsi Cola and eating banana and peanut butter sandwiches before you go to bed. You're going to have all kinds of dreams. God speaks today through His Word. He told through the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth, when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. We don't have special gifts. We don't have special visions. Uh, we don't have folks speaking in tongues. We don't have the gift of healing. Uh, uh, why? When that which was perfect came, the perfect Word of God. Uh, uh, Abram didn't have a copy of the Word of God. Uh, Abram did not have the indwelling Spirit of God. Uh, Abram, uh, 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 God had to literally appear to Abram in order for Abram to get the message from God okay we see the appearance we see the after but then notice the assurance look what it says he says fear not Abram I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward you see that he appears to him and he gives him assurance he says fear not I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward I want to preach with God's help on what God spoke to Abraham. I want to preach on fear not. Fear not. Is that not what he said? Mm -mm. He said fear not. Now I want to tell you something. If God literally appeared to us, we'd need him to tell us fear not too. Because it would scare us to death. John saw, when he was on the Isle of Patmos, he saw uh, uh, the Lord high and lifted up and saw, uh, by the way, he uh, didn't have long brown flowing hair and blue eyes and a big nose. Uh, 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 he uh, didn't have just little nail prints in his hands and his feet and a little crown of thorn. No, no. He said, I seen his hair was white as wool. Uh, his countenance was as grass. Uh, his eyes were as flames of fire. Uh, his voice was as many waters. Uh, uh, what are you saying? Uh, uh, when John saw him, he fell at his feet as a dead man. Hmm? so when Abram sees him he says fear not can I say in your King James Bible 170 times you find that very phrase fear not now if God said it one time that had been enough but he repeats it over and over and over and over again Miss Cinda and he has to say that because we're just human and we forget and we worry and we fret and we have new circumstances hits us uh, all the time. I mean, when we were young, certain things didn't bother us. Now we're getting a little little age on us. Not you were not old, but we're getting a little age on us, Miss Mary. Well, I wasn't going to say that, but you're right. You're old, okay. <laughs> we start getting a little older. Start getting a little more frail, and certain things affect us different than when they was younger. Huh? When you was young, man, you you young buck, you was ready to take on the world. Now you're slowing down a little, huh? And so the Lord has to constantly remind us. He has to constantly, over and over and over, let us know He's in control. He's constantly got to tell. How many times did He tell His disciples He was going to have to go to Jerusalem where He'd be betrayed in the hands of angry men and they'd crucify Him? Yet when it happened, they were all shocked. Uh, uh, can I say how many times uh, uh, are we shocked? Uh, and yet the Lord is constantly trying to remind us, trying to assure us. Uh, how many times have you heard that he'll never leave ye, leave thee, nor forsake thee? Uh, yet you'll go through something. You'll say, where's the Lord? He's right there. Amen. So he says, fear not. 170 times he says, fear not. Can I say... We're not to fear, first of all, because of the person of God. Look what he said in this chapter. He says, fear not, Abram, I am. We should never fear because of the person of God. He didn't say, fear not, Abram, I was. That's not what he said. Hmm? Brother Charlie, I'm glad he was a big enough God while you was on that submarine to keep you safe. But now out of that, you're out of that big hunk of metal and you're out in the real world, he's still a big enough God to keep you safe. Because hmm? he, he's the I am. He's not the I was. He's not the I will be. Huh? Hallelujah. One of these days we're going to see him as he is. We'll see him in his glory. What a day that's going to be. But i got news for you. He's that same person now. Hmm? He's not only the I was and the I will be, he's the I am. Hmm? 
When uh, 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 Moses said, what's your name? They're going to want to know your name. He says, tell them I am that I am. Uh, now that wouldn't uh, uh, really resonate too well with hillbillies. Uh, what do you mean I am that I am? But uh, I've learned in 46 years of trusting in him. Uh, he is, I am everything I need. Uh, hey, when I'm troubled, uh, he's the calm. Uh, hey, when I'm fired up, uh, he's the soothing one. Uh, hey, when I'm worried, uh, he's the uh, uh, faithful one. I'm telling you, he's I am of everything that we need. Uh, he's the I am. And we shouldn't fear because of the person of God. When people get afraid, it's because they've got their eyes off Him. He's the I Am. What do you need tonight? I got good news. He's the I Am. Hmm? He's, did you ever study and do a study on the names of Jesus and the names of God? Hmm? I've got a five volume set on just the names of God. Uh, you know why one name can't be attached to him? Because he's exactly what you need when you need it. Hmm? Hmm. Who's the I am? And can I say, we shouldn't fear because of the person of God. Listen, there's never been anything too hard for him. Do you realize God has never even been challenged? Now, I know we have this, this mindset that you got God on one side, the devil on the other side, and we're caught up in the middle, and there's a constant struggle. There's no struggle with God. The devil can't even approach God unless God allows him to, and the devil has to do exactly what he tells him to do. Hmm? The devil's utterly powerless before God. My dear friends, when you get a hold of that, it'll help you. When you get a hold of the fact that God loves you more than that, what love is, can, when you get a hold of the fact that God has never loved you any less than He loves you right now, and He's never loved you any more than He loves you right now, that God is love and God loves you, and God uh, is doing all things well, and God is concerned, uh, when you realize that uh, what is going on in your life has does nothing to do about with your relationship between you or God, uh, but what is going on in your life is God trying to use you to impact somebody else's life, and you realize that God trusts you that much? You realize you can trust him. Hmm? Uh, when, you can't, when you can't find his hand, you can track him through his word. Can I say something tonight? Don't fear because of the person we got. God has never failed anybody because God can't fail. God's never lied to anybody because God cannot lie. You can just trust him. Hmm? Hmm? Trust the Lord. Hmm? So many people so upset, so worried about so many things. You don't have to fear tonight because of the person of God. And I say this, you don't have to fear tonight because of the protection of God. Look what God said. Now, the president didn't say this. The Congress didn't say this. That little Jewish guy with the CDC didn't say this. huh? God said this. He says, fear not, Abram. I am thy shield. Hmm? Can I say, if God is protecting me, what do I have to worry about? I told you all Wednesday night, I'm in his hand. His hand's in the Father's hand. No man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. That means that if it gets to me, it's got to go through Jesus' hand. And to get through Jesus' hand, it's got to go through God's hand. I'm in a pretty safe place. It doesn't matter what it is. Nothing will come to me outside the perfect will of God. And if God allows it to come into my life, then God is able to take care of it. So I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to let God handle all that. And I'm just going to enjoy being in the palm of his hand hallelujah huh Amen. he said I am thy shield hmm? I got news for you you can put all the dead bolts on your house get all the alarm systems do whatever you want to and if somebody wants in they're going to get in but can I help you with something if God's protecting your house put a hedge about it there ain't nobody getting in including the devil hmm uh, it's a blessing being hedged in by God. He told Abram, he said, I'm thy shield. I've got good news for you. If you're saved by the good grace of God, you are a recipient of all the promises to Abraham. Do you know that? Yep. And if God promised Abraham that he was his shield, guess who else's shield he is? Yours. Amen. 
Mm -hmm. I don't have to fret because of the protection of God. Friend, if God can't protect me, I'm in trouble. My son just testified how he got rear-ended, but he didn't get hurt. Hmm? Listen, I don't know how many times God has taken care of me. Hmm? I don't know how many times. Hmm? I remember one time, y'all about to die, so I'll tell a story. Miss Nett and I just celebrated 31 years of marriage on Wednesday. And I don't know how many times God has watched over me over the years. But I remember one time back when we was dating. You got to understand, when we was dating, I was working third shift. I'd get off work and I'd go to college. When I got off college, I'd go take a shower. And then I'd head to Florence. And then I'd have to be at work. There were sometimes I hadn't slept for two or three days. But if it got to where I got to come see Miss Nett, I'd come see Miss Nett. Hmm? I was smitten. I was in love. Huh? You know anything about that honeymooner? Huh? 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 I was in love. I ain't even got to them. They ain't even, I don't even know if they know what honeymoon is. They're still in, I ain't even wrapped my head around all that yet over there. I'll leave them alone for a while. Huh? But I'll never forget. I don't know how long it had been since I'd slept. Uh, but I was driving home from Florence. It was, I don't know, it was after midnight. I don't know what time it was. I'm driving, I'm driving from Florence back to Batavia. I had the most prized vehicle that I've ever had. If she was a cussing woman, she'd cuss right about now. She hated that car. Yeah, I had a 1976 Maverick. It was nice, man. Had a V6, had air conditioning, the windows actually rolled down. I mean, it was nice. Huh? I'd had the Corvette. I did the Corvette thing. My Corvette got eight miles a gallon highway. I mean, you know, it, it had 576 horsepower. It got eight miles a gallon highway. At that time, gas got up to $2.75 a gallon. I'm in college. I'm working for minimum wage in a fi fiberglass factory. I can't afford to keep putting gas in the vet, let alone insurance, so I, so I sell the vet, right? I got an uncle, Preston. He said, I got this Maverick. I'll make you a deal, 600 bucks. I'm saying, hallelujah. Then about three months later, I met, met, met Miss Annette. She hated that car. She hated it. She hated it. Really, it was, it was a beater, man. It was, you know, it's like that old Ford you got. Yeah. I just drove it. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about keeping it clean. You know, whatever could fit in the back seat, I didn't care. Mm -hmm. She cared, huh? She hated that thing. But anyway, I'm driving a Maverick back. And I don't know, somewhere on 275, right around the Alexander exit, I didn't realize it, but I decided to take a nap. Huh? You say, what happened? I woke up and I was facing the opposite direction in the median. You say, what happened? I just cranked her back up, put it in drive, and drove the rest of the way home. I didn't go back to sleep after that. <laughs> you say, what are you saying, Brother Doug? I'm saying, the Lord has always taken care of me. I could have very easily went out into eternity that night. But you see, that wasn't the Lord's plan for my life. huh? And you and I could both sit here for hours and talk about the times when we've been on the highway or the times when something came our way. And yet, here we still are. Hmm? Hmm. So why should I worry? Why should I fret? Why should I fear? And the Lord is the one protecting me. Hmm? When Christian was interviewing for the, for the sheriff's department, it was an amazing thing. He's getting a job, but they interviewed me. They interviewed Miss Nett. They came to our house. They went up and looked at his room. Thanks the Lord, he cleaned it that day. Are you listening? <laughs> they wanted to see all the weapons he owned, everything. I mean, they went there. When I was down in South Carolina preaching a meeting, they called me up. They said, "We'd like to interview you. We'd like to come to your house." said not going to happen I'm in South Carolina so they interviewed me over the phone and they began to talk to me and she said you do understand that being a deputy sheriff is a dangerous job that's what she said I said ma'am we gave him to the Lord a long time ago I said you know what I found the safest place you can be is in the center of God's will I said I believe God's able to take care of him huh are you listening 
People fretting all the time. You know how many people have told us, oh, are you worried about him being a police officer? No, I'd be more worried about him working at Steak and Shake or something because he'd kill somebody over there. Are you listening? He wouldn't put up with the job. No, he's right where God put him. I mean, God made him to be a police officer. You know that as well as I do, huh? I'm just trying to help you something. Why should I fret? Why should I fear? Mm, because of God's protection. I, I don't have anything to worry about. Because of the person of God. We shouldn't fear because of the promises of God. Look at what he tells Abram. He says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. What a promise from God. Miss Marcy, if he just told you, I'm your reward, that would be enough. Wouldn't it be enough to get to go to heaven and see him? Wouldn't that be enough? I mean, who wants anything anymore? Just about his feet and kiss his feet and thank him for uh, uh, however long it takes to thank him because there is no time and glory. Uh, and just lay there and bow before him and worship him uh, and tell him how much we love him and thank him uh, for taking our place on the cross, uh, for becoming our propitiation and our mercy seat, uh, for shedding his blood, uh, for coming to where we were in our lost state, uh, convicting us of sin. Uh, when we called on him, he answered uh, and he forgave us of our sin uh, and he washed us uh, and he cleansed us uh, and he robed us in his righteousness uh, and he allows us to go to his heaven uh, wouldn't that be enough uh, but he didn't just say I'm thy reward he said I am thy great reward huh? he said you're just not getting me you're getting everything that comes with me huh? Hey, he's the cattle on a thousand hills, uh, and we've been made a joint heir to his throne. Uh, that means we get everything he's got. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, uh, it's a blessing to know uh, it's more than just him. Uh, we get him. Uh, then we get everything that he has. What a blessing. Uh, but he didn't just say, I'm your great reward. Uh, he said, I'm your great exceeding reward. Uh, he said, not only do you get me, uh, not only do you get everything I got, uh, but you get all of heaven too. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know. Uh, hey, he's a great God uh, who's promised us uh, uh, many promises. Uh, the greatest of all uh, is eternal life with him in his abode forevermore. What a blessing. So why should I fret? You know, say, preacher, you might die. Don't threaten me with heaven. That's already settled. And I've already told you, if you ever read an obituary and said, well, I died, call him up, chew him out, say, no, he died out to sin in 1974, but he's alive and well today. I promise you I will be. You see, we shouldn't fear because of the promises of God. The promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, the promise that he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, and all the other 30,000 promises in the word of God. We shouldn't fear. That's why we need to study and read the word of God. The more of those promises you put down in your heart, the more of an anchor you'll have when trouble comes. Huh? Amen. We shouldn't fear. Hmm? Fear is the enemy of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. What about this? We shouldn't fear because of the past performances of God. When has God ever let down anybody? I, I give you a bunch of them this morning. Can't hardly swallow tonight. Y'all preach me death this morning. But can I say, when has God ever not come through? Come on, hmm? yeah. hmm. Because God done it for them. God can do it for you and I. Do you realize God doesn't love Abram any more than he loves you? He doesn't love Abram any less than he loves you. He is no respecter of persons. And if God's done it for anybody in that Bible, God can do it for you. Because of the past performances of God, and I see the mighty things of God. I was revisiting over there in Isaiah 52 this week where it said the Lord bared his mighty arms. Well, anytime somebody rolls up their shirt sleeves, they're getting ready to go to work. And how many times has God went to work on our behalf? Hmm? So what do I have to fear about? Hmm? Then I thought about this. We shouldn't fear because of the peace of God. 
Uh, there is a peace that passeth all understanding. Jesus said before he left, he said, Peace I leave with thee. My peace I leave with thee. Not peace like the world knows. My peace. You know why they're keeping the liquor stores open? Because people need that to get through what they're going through. Hmm? You know why I don't need liquor? I got to the peace of God. Hmm? And I'll remember where I was tomorrow. Hmm? And I won't end up with cirrhosis. Hmm? Hmm? You ever seen people drink a lot? Do you ever see how many wrinkles they got? How rough their life is? How blotchy their skin is? Huh? I still have people, I know none of you believe it, I still have people say, you can't be 57 years old. No, going on 57 years old. Huh? Where's all your wrinkles? Hmm? I lost them at Calvary. Hmm? There's just a lot of things that I've never had to take part of because I've met Jesus along the way. Are you listening? Hmm? There's a lot of scars I don't have in my life because Jesus has been good to me. But can I say the peace of God will help you and keep you from fear? Huh? Them disciples were tore up on that ship in a storm. Here comes Jesus walking on the water. Hmm? Hopped up in the bow of the ship, said, Peace, be still. What happened? Hmm? He's asleep in the ship. They said, Master, don't you don't you carry we perish? Jumped up, peace be still, the winds and the waves, everything stops. Amen. How does that happen? He's God. Yeah. You know what to calm the storms of your life? Peace. Yeah. All you raised your hands that you got family members telling you you shouldn't go to church, you shouldn't go out, you ought to be a hermit, buy all the toilet paper and all the water and all the, the supplies and you know and all that. Just say this, but what do you do with the peace of God that I got in my heart? Hmm? Y'all remember Y2K? Huh? Man, the world was going to end. They didn't know what was going to happen to the computer industry. And everything's run by computers. They, I mean, they had planes were going to fall out of the sky. I mean, uh, 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 everybody's going to lose all their money in the banks. I mean, you, you wasn't going to be able to go buy anything at the grocery stores because the grocery stores' computers were going out and everything. And I mean, I, I believe my mother-in-law still has toilet paper from then. Are you listening? Uh, I mean, people started hoarding and started doing everything. I refused to buy anything extra. I just refused. Say, so what what'd you all do? We went to Gatlinburg. Huh? We's already married and went to Gatlinburg. <laughs> well, we took the three kids, went to Gatlinburg, got in a condo, had a good time and everything. It's a funny story, though. Uh, we went to, I need a little extra cash, so I went down to an ATM to get some cash. Didn't give me no money. Kept my card. I'm thinking, oh boy, this Y2K really did hit, huh? <laughs> My check card ended in 12 of 99. Well, now it's January 99. It wouldn't give me my money, huh? I'd use another card. But anyway, I'm just trying to uh, maybe think for a second, though, huh? But listen, I think we survived Y2K, didn't we? Hmm? Huh? Remember after 9 11? Churches were filled. Everybody's hearts were going to get right with God. Terrorism came to America. That didn't last long, did it? Mm -mm. You know what is still lasting from that, though? Besides us still occupying that in Afghanistan, uh, the Patriot Act. You know, a lot of things that they are enacting now is because of the Patriot Act. Again, people sell out their freedoms for safety. Well, why should I worry about all those things when I have the peace of God in my heart? Hmm? Next time uh, uh, those, those loved ones are saying, you shouldn't go out, you should just say, but I have the peace of God. Sure. And it's better to be right with God than it is with man, isn't it? That's right. hmm. See, they won't have an answer for that. They'll have an answer why you shouldn't until you start putting the word of God on them. You say, because of the peace of God, I'm not going to fear. Hmm. I learned a long time ago, God's able to handle it. So I'll just let him. huh? Let me give you three keys to overcoming your fear. We'll be done. We found this chapter. Can I say the first key to overcoming fear is you've got to learn to listen. Look in verse number four. The Lord tells Abram to not to fear. He says fear not in verse one. But then he's going to give him some keys that causes him not to fear. In verse number 4, the Bible says, And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, 
This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. You see, first of all, the Lord spoke to him. He had to listen. Again, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The greatest preachers in the world can preach the word of God, but if you don't open up your heart and listen, it'll never help you. Hmm? You can have a King James Bible in every room in your house and two in your car, but if you never open it up and listen to what God says, it'll never help you. Hmm? You've got to learn to listen. If you're going to overcome your fear, you've got to learn to listen. Hmm? You see, we live in a day and age, and especially this millennial crowd, everybody wants uh, visual things. Hmm? What can I say? The way for strength, faith, and peace from God is using these organs, not these. Hmm? Mm, there's still the sleight of hand. The hand is quicker than the eye. There are a lot of things you think you see. You get up in the middle of the night and you, you, you think you got a Sasquatch running around in your kitchen. Huh? You turn on the light and it's just a reflection off of something in the window. Huh? You don't trust your sight. Not when it comes to things of God, you trust what God said. You've got to learn to listen. But you do need to look. First you listen, but then you need to look, and you've got to know where to look. Look at verse number 5. The Bible says this. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the, the, the stars, if thou be, a, be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. You've got to learn to look toward heaven. And it doesn't do you any harm to start counting those stars and start looking at those stars and realize God called them all by name. Amen. Hmm? But you need to look beyond the stars. In Hebrews chapter 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You need to learn to listen to God, but you need to look toward the Lord. Put your eyes on Him. I said the other night, when you're in a pit, the only way out is to look up. We need to look to Him to deliver us from what pits we have fallen into. But the third key and the final key to overcome, you've got to learn to listen. You've got to learn to look to the Lord, but you've got to learn to let. You've got to learn to let God have it. Look at verse number 6. And he believed in the Lord, and he, the Lord, counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham believed the Lord... Uh, the Lord counted it to Abraham for righteousness. You've got to let God do the work. Once he believed in the Lord, he decided he was going to let God have first place in his life, and he was just going to trust God. And when you let God be God in your life, it is counted as righteousness unto you. You've got to learn to listen, learn to look to God, and learn to let God be God in your life. Let me help you something. He don't need your help. He can handle it. Be a great day in your life when you take the reins of your heart and your life and you give them to God and say, here it is, it's yours, Lord. I'll be a living sacrifice unto thee. I'll die out to self and let you have it. And when you let God have it, he can do great things with it. But as long as you want to control your, your path through life, you're going to be a worried, messed up critter. Hmm? Amazing me how many people are afraid of so many things. God help you. You say, preacher, I'm not worried. <laughs> Listen, I've heard for years, a congregation takes on the personality of the pastor. And I hope that hasn't made you all smart, Alex, the last 20 years. As Marcy, but I don't know anybody else. Huh? If there's one thing I hope that you have gained, me being your pastor, regardless of what me and my wife or me and my family has faced, we've trusted God. Amen. We didn't even tell you when they thought she had ovarian cancer because we knew God was in control. When I was diagnosed with cancer, I let y'all know God was in control. Other things that we have went through, surgeries after surgeries, and spine surgeries and all those sort of things, 
four days after surgery, I'm behind the pulpit. That should tell you that if I'm not fretting over it and I've trusted God, then you can trust the same God I've trusted in. Hmm? It's more than just preaching to me. This is a lifestyle. I believed the God of this book. And I have put my faith in this book. And I built my life around him in this book. And he's never failed me. And he's no respecter for persons, friends. If he don't fail me, he surely won't fail you. Huh? You've just got to learn to trust him. Learn to depend on him. And he'll take care of you. Some of you has been taken care of a long time. And yet, if you're not careful, you can just take your eyes off of him for a glimpse. And fear starts welling up. That's why we've got to come back to him. And we'll revisit once again the words, fear not. He's still in control. And friend, he's able to take care of you tonight. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, I don't know how you can live in this world and not be saved. See all that's going on, I'd run to Jesus tonight. Give my heart and life to him. But if you're here tonight and you're saved, I'd run to him as well. I said, Lord, here I am. I trust in you. Help my unbelief, but God, use me to impact somebody else's life. Well, you don't have to go very far right now to find folks in a mess. Find folks all tore up. Find folks that, that, that have no hope. All you got to do is let them know, I've got the answer. His name is Jesus. And let your life show them that you truly have believed in the Lord. And they too will look his way. And this time of day and age, they have no choice. Uh, things are going awry. People are in a mess. They start seeing your hand calm. They start seeing your life calm. They start seeing you not fretting but rejoicing. They'll want what you got, trust me. They'll say, I don't want the way this world's going. I want what they got. But as long as you stay tore up, messed up, and all worried about it like they are, why would they want to trust in your God? Hmm? Why don't you show them the God of Abraham is your God? Hmm? Brother James sang that song, The Lord is my shepherd. David said, He's my shepherd. I got good news. He's my shepherd too. Amen. And he knows how to take care of me. So I wonder tonight, are you fretful? Are you fearing? You don't have to. God's in control. But is he in control of your life? That's the question. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. While folks are coming, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. One little verse, Genesis 15, that we can grow, gain so much strength from. Lord, you told Abram not to fear. And Lord, you're telling us the same. So Lord, we'll just choose to trust you. And Lord, we'll hinge on what you have to say. We'll long to meet with you and learn more of you and we'll look your way. And God, when those elements of fear begin to try and well up in our lives, help us remember that verse. Help us to listen to you, look to you, and let you be God in our lives. And God, if there's somebody here unsaved, I pray tonight be the night of their salvation. Lord, if there's folks that are saved, but Lord, they've just been fretful, help them come get some faith, get some strength. Lord, if there's folks here that haven't wavered at all, but they just might want to come and thank you and tell you what a great God you've been, and they love you. Or maybe somebody, you lay somebody on somebody's heart to go to somebody and just tell them they appreciate them. I don't know, Lord. This is your invitation. Speak to hearts. Help folks to mind God. We'll thank you for what you do, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.